In life, we often find ourselves tasked with many things and experiencing many things. Most things that occur in this world can be done in many ways. There is often an ordinary way to do things and an extraordinary or extraordinary way. We have this, for example, in the liturgy right now in the Catholic Church. We have the ordinary form of the Roman Rite, which is celebrated here. And we have the extraordinary form, which uses the Missal of 1962. In Latin, with the prayers at the foot of the altar, all the extra crosses, all the extra things. So too in medicine. We have the basic trip to the ER, where you get stitches or a cast and sent home with some ibuprofen. And we have the 38-hour surgeries to separate conjoined twins. Ordinary and extraordinary. We have many things and many ways, many tasks we are called to do as Christians. As we hear in the prophet Isaiah, sharing in the role of Christ through our baptism, we are called to bring about justice. We are called to bring about peace and love. And we hear the ordinary way in today's reading. We hear a bruised reed. He will not bend. We hear how his voice will not be heard in the street. We hear many things. Which I'm sure raises the question, well then how do you bring about justice? Because we can see at times we've had a summer or more of seeing extraordinary cries for justice, for change, for things. People in the streets, in some cities, for days on end. But how do we do this without raising our voice in the street as we hear? The Compendium on Catholic Social Teaching, which is an extra book the Church puts out to supplement the Catechism and other things, is several hundred pages long. But in it, it teaches an important lesson. The best way to change society is through the church, and more importantly, the domestic church. The domestic church comes from Vatican II, or is reiterated with more force. Namely, the church of your home, father and mother, son and daughter, grandparent and great-grandparent. We are the first teachers of our children. The ritual of baptism, we pray, the priest prays that the parents will be the best of teachers of the faith. This is the ordinary way to make the world a better place in our homes, in our families, in our work environments, through the lives we live day in and day out, in our ordinary life, we make change. For good or for bad. We are the ones who teach our children, no, we don't use those words. We are the ones who teach our children, no, we don't hit somebody for that reason. We are the ones who teach our children, no, we don't walk away from that situation. This is the ordinary way we change things in the eyes of the church. That doesn't mean we denounce or ignore the extraordinary. Every year, to commemorate 
Roe versus Wade, countless parishes, countless church groups, countless members of the Catholic faith, and others go to Washington to march and demonstrate peacefully. They raise their voice in the street, but they do so in a specific way, for a specific reason. Christ came to change the world. And he will come again to judge it, the living and the dead and the world by fire. We believe this. We profess it. It is our task to make the world a place fit for that coming king. We are all tasked that with our baptism, which we should be reminded of today as we remember the baptism of Christ. Even God himself was baptized for the sake of the world. So too are we baptized into his mission. A mission, mission which occasionally may call us to raise our voice, to take to the streets. Your own conscience, your own formation, your own beliefs will dictate that. Christ himself at times will be very peaceful. At other times, he makes a whip out of cord and chases people off the Temple Mount. But in the day to day, he preached the good news. He worked miracles for those around him. He loved those who came to him. He forgave those who asked his pardon. He brought God the Father to everyone he met in every little way, not simply through the extraordinary actions of his triumphant entry into Jerusalem, not simply by miraculous healings or feedings of thousands, but in the day to day, in sitting down with the woman at the well and giving her living water. in sitting down and healing the leper, the Samaritan who came to him, in healing the blind man, people he encountered, people he spoke to. So too were we called to make the world a place fit for all, a place of love and justice, a place of God's mercy and truth, and the place, according to the church, where we should start is our own lives and our own families and those ordinary daily encounters where we can show and where we can be Christ living and breathing and working in this world.